Hey everyone, John Lorden here. Welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. We have a brand new case that we haven't covered on the channel before that we're going to go into today, although some of the elements of this story sound like one that we've covered just recently. We have another student disappearing from their high school. However, in this case, the parents seem to believe that maybe there is some grooming from an adult that has taken place that is uh, coming into play here. So we're going to go through all the available information and see what we can learn about the case of missing person Cynthia Justine Lowry. Um, we can see here at New Namus, uh, she's already been entered, thankfully. Her date of last contact is January 17th, 2018. She's missing from San Antonio, Texas. She is 17 years old in her junior year of high school. Um, we can see in the demographics that her nickname is Benny. She is a Hispanic Latino female, about five foot four inches tall, weighs around 163 pounds. For the circumstances of disappearance, we see that Cynthia was last seen on January 17th, 2018, but then we get this other cause for concern. She may be in need of medical attention. And I've seen several references to this, but I have not found any details about uh, what type of medical issue she's having. Um, it, the feeling that I'm getting, particularly from the Facebook page on this, is that there is some type of treatment that she needs regularly, and her family is concerned that she is not getting that at this time. Physical description, brown hair. Uh, nothing in terms of the real description of her hair. Most of the pictures I've seen, it's, it's longer. Uh, so I would assume that it's still longer unless she has changed up her look. Uh, also, brown eyes. Uh, piercing. Cynthia has three ear piercings in each ear, two at the bottom of her earlobe and one at the top on the cartilage. Uh, Cynthia has a scar near the left temple. I haven't seen any real good photos of that. Uh, her incisor tooth is abnormal. For clothing and accessories, she was wearing a red v-neck t-shirt, blue jeans, black vans, canvas shoes. Uh, for jewelry, she wears many rings a mother's heart ring designed all the way around one band with diamonds, one chunky ring with multiple fake diamonds, as well as earrings. Uh, transportation methods, obviously, we don't have anything. Let me just take a look at the images here. Yeah, unfortunately, they just have the uh, same picture for the case ID. Nothing in terms of close-ups um, on uh, the potential scar is what I was hoping for. So I mentioned there was a Facebook page. This is it. It's called Help Find Cynthia Justine Lowry. Uh, of course, I'll have a link to it in the description box below as well as everything else that we're looking through here today. Uh, we can see on June 3rd, there was a posting. We joined other families today with an effort to bring attention to all who are missing in the San Antonio area. This honk for the missing effort is not a club, but a support group creating awareness to those families needing answers in bringing their loved one home. Uh, of course, I think it's really awesome to hear about that. I'm going to try to look into this club more uh, just to see. I don't know if they have local chapters or if this is only in Texas, but I just wanted to call out that I think that's pretty awesome. What a great way to get these families together, uh, give them some shoulders to lean on and get them out there uh, doing something to raise exposure to their missing loved one. I'm just really, really happy to see that. Over at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at missingkids.com, there is a poster that has been put together for Cynthia. Um, primarily the same information that we've already gone over, but I just wanted to show it to you so you can take a look at these photos as well. Once, it, once again, it's noting she may be in need of medical attention. I'm just really kind of concerned about that. Let me just at this point put out the offer that uh, if any of Cynthia's family, I know some of you are, are active on social media, um, if any of you do want to come on the channel to help clear some things up for me, to continue to help raise exposure on this case, uh, the invite is absolutely open to you. All you have to do is email me, J O H N John at lordenarts.com. Lordenarts, just like it's spelled in the channel name down below. Moving forward to Plate Pick, I believe it's Plate, P-L-8-P-I-C.com. They also have a profile they've put together on Cynthia Lowry. Get a little more detail here. Cynthia was last seen on Wednesday, January 17th, 2018, at John Jay High School in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, they also have 
contact information here. It's a little better than I've seen in other places. They actually even have the case number. So I'm gonna be including that contact information down below. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Cynthia, please use that contact information. Put it in the hands of people that can help on this case and hopefully help this family figure out uh, where Cynthia is. There are parents that are worried. She has sisters that are worried. One of her sisters is pregnant, about to have a baby. Everyone would love for Cynthia to be there to be a part of all that. So let's keep our eyes and ears open on this. Heading over to news4sanantonio.com. So what are the details around her disappearance? Um, basically, we know that she made it to school on January 17th. Uh, we know that she went to her first period class. I'm hearing some slight discrepancies in terms of second period, if she was actually in that class or not. Um, but here it says that she was last seen during her second period class at John Jay High School. Uh, I believe she might have spoken to a friend about the fact that either someone was picking her up or that she was going to leave campus to go see someone else. Um, also noted in this article, her family says her phone has been off since then. Uh, unfortunately, that also seems like a conflict with the information that we see at the mobile mysanantonio.com. Different article. Uh, but it says, according to a police report, Lowry only went to her first class before leaving the school around 10 a.m. When her family arrived to pick her up from school, she told them she wasn't there, police said. So that leads me to believe that her cell phone was actually on until after school when her family noticed that she was gone and they actually did seem to speak to her at the end of school. Just another one of these things that uh, would be nice to clarify if one of the family does want to come on the channel. But after that day, it's very clear the family hasn't been able to get in touch with her since say the authorities. Um, so I did look through Twitter. I found several accounts related to this. I believe this is her mother's account. Her mother's name is also Cynthia. Uh, many messages where she's trying to raise exposure, asking for help in terms of raising exposure for her daughter. Uh, William, I believe this might be her father uh, or another family member that happens to be a male, also um, retweeting. And then we get this really interesting one on February 26th. Uh, it actually originally was sent by her mother. My 17-year-old daughter is missing. If anyone has seen her or does see her, please call police. And then, of course, they have the phone number. But it notes it's very likely she is with 25-year-old Tanya Vasquez. And then it even has uh, the Twitter handle of this person. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like her account is locked up. There's really nothing that you can see there because of how it's locked down. Um, but they're including a picture of Tanya Vasquez here as well. So this is where things get interesting. Um, when I first started looking into this, obviously I had no idea uh, how Tanya ties into this case at all, but I kept reviewing information, went back to their Facebook page, started looking through all the posts there. And here we get a little more detail about how Tanya might actually be involved. A few people have asked for more pics of the woman that went onto John Jay High School campus morning of my daughter's disappearance, January 17th. Really interesting. This is the only little piece that I can find about Tanya actually going onto the campus. Um, in terms of this case, I don't know if it really changes things all that much. I'd be curious to know if the high school has footage of this woman coming onto the campus. Is this a secure campus? Is this the type of campus where anyone can just walk on? Or did she have to check in with the office? Did she check in with the office? What did she tell them? Did she say that I'm here to pick someone up? Uh, a lot of really interesting questions I would have for the school. The feeling that I'm getting reading through the Facebook posts is that the school is not cooperating very much at all. I don't know if the family has even seen video of her actually leaving. Um, so uh, it's it's a little touchy when it comes to some of this stuff sometimes because, of course, you know, the school doesn't want to find be found liable for something if they didn't protect the campus properly or they let someone on that shouldn't have been onto the campus. Um, but... This post is also showing a couple of the tattoos that Tanya has and asking for people to, if you recognize her, to call police. Uh, what's interesting is, according to the few comments I've seen from police, they're really not saying that there's, they're, they're actually saying that there isn't a person of interest. They're kind of treating this as a straight up runaway situation. Um, but there is one article 
at clickorlando.com that includes a video segment. I really suggest you guys check this out. Go into the links below, go to Click Orlando and watch this video segment. Uh, her mother's interview during this video segment. This video segment is largely about online predators, but then at the end it turns into focus more on Cynthia's case and in particular why they're concerned. Now we're gonna hit a couple of those points here right now. Uh, her mother told News 6 that she had been communicating with a 25 year old woman the teen's mother said that they have a phone record that shows a call made to Kissimmee nine days after her daughter, a high school junior, went missing. Now, I'm really not sure why a town in Florida is coming up as potentially important here. There's a very loose association I think we're going to be able to make with another piece of information. Um, but from what I could tell, what I could see uh, on the Twitter account that we were talking about here um, for Tanya... Her hometown is actually listed, I believe, as San Antonio. So I don't know if maybe she has a phone that she brought with her from a time where she was living in Florida. I really don't know how this phone number from Florida ties into it at all. But uh, according to information that we find on this article, um, we're going to see that that phone number does seem to be associated in some way to um, Tanya. There's no texting between them whatsoever, but they did use Snapchat, uh, Cindy's, uh, Cynthia's mother told News 6. I think this person had a plan, some type of plan in her mind. She was going to get my daughter no matter what. Police detectives in San Antonio are treating the case as a runaway teen, but Mrs. Lowry said when she called the Kissimmee number, she spoke to the 25-year-old woman she suspects of luring her daughter. Um... Now, just keep in mind that number could be a cell phone. It doesn't mean that they are actually in the state of Florida. But then we get this piece of information. There was a note that was found um, by Cynthia's mother. Uh, I've tried to read as much of it as I can. You know, some of it's kind of cropped off and you have to turn your head sideways. But it's pretty clear to me that this is a romantic note. Um, I can't tell what direction it's going in. I can't tell if this was written by Tanya for Cynthia or if Cynthia wrote this potentially to give to Tanya and then her mother found it. I'm not, I'm really not sure, but it's very, very clear. They're talking about being in love. They're talking about going to this castle. And I think that's where the Florida thing has some people wondering, are they talking about Disney World? Is this woman promising her, you know, hey, come with me and I'll take you to Disney World. We'll go have a great time or something like that. I'm not 100% sure of that. Um, she's referencing princess several times in this letter. And I don't know if the castle is just a representation of how happy this person is going to make her once she gets her uh, out of her home situation or something like that. But uh, definitely troubling. And you consider, you know, we have a 25 year old, we have a 17 year old, I believe in the state of Texas, the age of consent is actually 17. However, if they really did go to Florida, I believe in Florida, it's not, I think it's actually 18. So, um, I don't know what the legal ramifications are around this, but it certainly seems based on this information that we're getting from the family through this article, that there's a very good chance that there was some type of grooming situation that's going on here. Um, and then another interesting note on the Facebook page, just something else to keep an eye out for is Cynthia's iPhone 6 Plus has a white cover that says, uh, come and take it. There's a come and take it logo. You can see part of it in the reflections here. And they're just hoping that someone might find that and get it back to the family because if they're able to get to that phone, it might have some information that they need in terms of tracking what actually happened to Cynthia. So please take a good look at this picture. If you happen to see a phone with this case uh, somewhere out there, um, see if, if it could possibly be Cynthia's. And if it could, let's see if we can get it back to the family as well. Uh, some last comments from the family, once again, kind of leads me to believe that they're feeling very strongly about the Tanya aspect of this case. Uh, I'm wondering, have police actually spoken to Tanya about what's going on with all this? Um, there, there's just not enough information out there. And unfortunately, this is one of those cases that has had a little pop of news coverage. It even showed up on live PD on their missing person segment. 
Um, but the coverage seems to be disappearing really quickly. And honestly, even doing a, a Google search on this was really, really rough. I'm, I'm thankful that the family put the Facebook page together, has been including links in there regularly. Uh, cause it was, I really had to dig a bit just even to get this much of the story together. Uh, the teenager's parents believe that someone took her from school. She's being held against her will said Cynthia. That's what I think. She's never run away before. She's close to us. Their daughter's family says her bedroom is exactly how she left it. This is the hardest thing I've ever been through, said Cynthia, her mother. I just want to tell her that we love her and for her to call us. I need to know if she's okay. And I don't really know if Cynthia is truly being held against her will. Um, it's tough to tell when you're looking at situations like this because you have a 17-year-old that could be being manipulated with the story of, hey, we're going to change your whole life and we're going to be happy together and we're going to go do this and go do that. And I think even children, I mean, in general, when we're teenagers, we're looking to figure ourselves out and we're looking to kind of make our own choices. And for some of us, that means moving away from our family emotionally, but, but also physically in some way. So it seems to me like someone that's aiming for someone that age might be trying to get them out of that situation. But then the question is, where are they trying to lead them after that? Is this simply a 25-year-old that is infatuated with a 17-year-old? Or is there something much worse at play here? Um, some type of situation that you know could involve some level of trafficking or something along those lines, which would be horrible and terrible. But I imagine on the outset, particularly with the very limited information that we have here, this is probably kind of what it would look like. They're going to try to win trust first, get them into a situation where they have them physically there. And then if there is some trap to spring, that's likely where it's going to happen. So I'm certainly concerned. Um, you know, we are now several months past um, her disappearance and there's just... I don't know, guys, there's not a lot of information that's out here. Uh, I've given you all that I could scratch together once again to the family. Uh, my, my offer stands. If any of you want to come on, if there's information that you feel like sharing that might help us all understand this case more, um, please reach out to me, john at lordandarts.com, and we will make that happen. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely concerned. I see where the family's concerned. Uh, with the information that we have seen, I see why they're suspicious of this Tanya woman. Very curious to know if investigators have spoken to her at all. Um, very curious to know about the school, dealing with the school, what they're saying. I've, I've actually already started a list of questions uh, just in case any of the family reaches out. So I'm hopeful that that will happen. But this is where I turn it over to you guys. If you have friends in the San Antonio area, please share this video with them. We want to make sure that everyone sees this face, that they know Cynthia, and that they're keeping their eyes and ears open for her. Um, on top of that, because there is some weird hit of Florida, uh, keep this in mind if you're out in Florida as well. Just kind of keep this case in the back of your head. If you see anyone that matches this description, uh, please give it a second thought. Please do a little digging, maybe take a picture, maybe talk to local authorities if you think that that person uh, might be being held against her will or something along those lines. And lastly, if Cynthia happens to see this, um, I understand that you're 17 years old. I understand that maybe you want to get a jump in life and you want to go off in a different direction and have a, a, a big grand new adventure. I get all that. And not everyone has to be extremely tight with their family. But the right thing to do in this case would be to get some note back to your family. And you don't have to tell them where you are. You just have to tell them that you're okay. Um, I think that would really mean the world to your family. And things can be figured out. Things can be patched up. Um, I'm sh more than sure that their arms are open and willing to bring you back um, whenever you're ready for that. We're all just hoping that you're in a situation where you're really making these decisions for yourself. And it's hard to know that with the information that we have. So that's what we're hoping, at least. 
All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Let's talk about this in the comments below. Please keep in mind, there's a very good chance the family's going to see this video. So let's please be respectful in those comments. I'm all up for talking about any potential theories, but obviously there's a good way to do that. There's an insensitive way to do that. Let's try to steer away from those insensitive types of comments. Uh, you guys are usually great at it, but I just have to remind us every now and then. So thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Searchlight. Hope each and every one of you out there is happy, stays safe, and I'll see you back here tomorrow on the Lord Nards channel.